Hi, I'm Dr. Charlie Liu, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about how to use emollients to treat eczema. Uh, so this is a key part of any eczema treatment, um, whether it's mild or whether it's severe, uh, every single eczema sufferer will have to put on emollients in order to try and solve the problem. Uh, so a lot of people don't quite use them in the correct way and they don't quite know what they're doing with emollients. So I'm going to do this short video just talking about the different types that are available and how to use them. Uh, so, to start off with the very basics, uh, we'll go back to what eczema is. So, uh, eczema has a lot of different causes, some of which are genetic, immunological, um, but at its core, part of what drives eczema is something called the itch-scratch cycle. So, without getting into too much detail about the skin, the skin essentially protects the inside of the body uh, from environmental things, so dust and pollutants and bacteria, viruses, that sort of thing. And they stop everything from the outside getting through into the inside. So you have your body on the inside, then you have a living layer of skin. On top of that, you have a dead layer of skin, the stuff that flakes off. And on top of the dead layer of skin, you have a layer of oil, essentially. And all of those layers of skin do something to prevent the outside from coming through to the inside. So when we use an emollient, we're essentially trying to replace that oil barrier layer. An emollient contains some water, some oil, and probably some other products to hold it all together and, and to keep it from uh, going bad and that sort of thing. But it's the oil part that's important for the treatment of eczema. So that's, a, that's why we need to use it. Uh, when stuff from the outside does get into the body, it causes some irritation and some inflammation, and this drives uh, itching, essentially. So when you do itch, obviously you use your nails, you're scratching away, and you just damage the surface layer even more damaging the dead skin, the living skin, and you're probably removing some oil by scratching as well. And then that, of course, just weakens the skin barrier, allows more environmental things through, uh, and the, the pattern just continues from there. And that's why we call it the itch scratch cycle. That's what we've got to try and get in the middle of in order to stop a flare-up of eczema. So the purpose of the emollients, like I said, is to try and replace that oil barrier. There are a couple of different types of emollients out there, and you may have heard these names but not quite understood what, ex what exactly they mean. So there are four basic types of emollient. There's lotions, creams, gels, and ointments. And they go in that order, and essentially the order is the lotions on one end contain the most water and the least oil, and the ointments on the other end contain the most oil and the least water. So if you were in a perfect world and all you wanted to do was get rid of your eczema with no other considerations, all you'd want to do is to use the ointment to treat your eczema because it contains the most amount of oil and when you apply it you'll find that it's very greasy so this is like the stuff that they use to lubricate engines basically uh, it's thick greasy stuff and it will form a good barrier on your skin and prevent anything from getting through the skin for probably four to six hours afterwards at the other end of the scale if you use the lotion it might feel quite nice to put on because it's watery it settles into the skin it's not greasy and it's not sticky but the amount of oil in it is quite low and so you'll often find that if you put on a lotion, within about an hour or so, your hands feel dry already again, because that oil content just isn't there. So we need to find a balance here. Um, like I said, in a perfect world, we'd all be using ointments, but most of us have to use our hands, at least, for our day jobs. Uh, and so we don't really want to be going around all sticky and greasy, leaving fingerprints on things. Uh, it's not particularly nice. So I often recommend that people have a couple of different emollients in their house. Number one, do you have a shop around? You don't want to use anything that has too much of a fragrance, and you don't want to use anything that has additives, has colour in it, uh, any odd ingredients, uh, because all of those things are going to go through the skin barrier and into the underlying tissue and cause inflammation. So you don't want that. That sort of thing is absolutely fine for people who don't have eczema, whose skin barriers are completely intact. But if you have eczema, particularly if you're having a flare at the moment, your skin barrier isn't intact, and so you don't want any of those fragrance ingredients or colour ingredients. So you want something that's as simple as possible. And probably the best way to go about this is to go to the pharmacy and ask the pharmacist what's available. There'll often be a shelf there with a couple of rows of different emollients that are kind of the, the prescribed emollients. Uh, and those ones will tend to be the ones that are kind of fragrance free. So start off by trying a couple of different ones, buy a few small bottles of things and see what it's most acceptable. Uh, so if you go out there and you try, let's say, some epiderm cream, you might find that it smells a bit medicinal for you and you don't particularly like the feel of it. And you might buy a bottle of Aveeno and go, actually, that smells all right and I don't mind putting it on. 
Uh, and I, I, like I said, I often recommend that people have a couple, a couple of different strengths of them. So have a cream and have an ointment on board. I would probably not bother with the lotions at all, to be honest, uh, because they just they need to be put on so frequently that they're almost not worth using. So probably the cream is the minimum one that I'd go for. And that, I would say, keep a bottle of it on hand. So keep it in your handbag if you're going about work, keep it in your pocket, keep a tube of it uh, next to the sink at work if you have to wash your hands a lot. And whenever you feel that the skin is getting dry and after you wash your hands, uh, just apply a layer of the cream and hopefully it shouldn't be too greasy. You can kind of go about your day as normal. Now the ointments are the much thicker ones and I generally recommend that people use these at night, particularly if they're having a flare of eczema. So flares hopefully shouldn't happen too often. We're talking a few times a year at most. If you're having more than a few flares a year, then you probably need to be on some maintenance treatment of some kind. But this is the stuff that I recommend for most people who are having a flare-up of eczema. And I generally say, have a shower in the evening. And then once you get out of the shower, just spend a little bit of time, five minutes or so, applying plenty of ointment to the troubled areas. Uh, so these are commonly places like the face and the neck, the insides of the elbows, the backs of the knees. Those are quite common places for eczema to flare up. So spend a bit of time putting a good, thick layer. Uh, you don't want to rub it in until you can't rub it in anymore. So this is something that people quite often do. They keep rubbing until uh, you can't spread it any further. And that's probably a bit too thin. So you want to stop uh, a fair amount of time before that happens. And then after you point the put the ointment on, go to bed. And while you're asleep, it will hopefully provide a decent amount of protection for a good few hours afterwards. Uh, whereas if you used a cream or a lotion, it's probably not going to do that. So uh, that's the different types of emollients, the lotions, the cream. Gels are somewhere in between, and then you've got the ointments. Now, when you buy the emollients, they're probably going to come in either a tube or a pump or a tub. So if you've got something like a tube, that's absolutely fine. You can just squeeze out whatever you need, apply it, and move on. If you have a tub, which some of the larger ones come in, so this is a 500 gram uh, tub, I think, what you want to avoid doing is to open it up and then stick your finger straight in. Um, so the problem with this is that your fingers do carry some bacteria and they also carry some dirt and the bacteria can live in the tub and then when you apply the, the cream later on the bacteria might have multiplied and the infection can get through the skin and into the lower layers. You don't want to cause an infection in the skin, it can be quite nasty um, and even if it doesn't cause an infection that bacteria is going to be irritant and all the, the nasty kind of things that the bacteria produce are going to be quite irritant. So if you're going to use a tub Make sure you use a clean implement like a spoon to remove the emollient and then take the, the emollient off the spoon and apply it as normal. And now that way, this stays nice and clean. You can pop it in the fridge afterwards and it will last a bit longer. Uh, if you do have a tendency towards dry skin and, and, and flares of eczema, uh, yeah, I would invest in a big tub of 500 grams, something like this. The uh, gels often come in a pump dispenser, which is very handy. Often those are quite big, like 500 grams. Um, and you don't have to worry about getting infections uh, into, the, into that because it's a, a pump dispenser. Um, probably the only other thing to say about emollients is that um, I think most people who suffer from flares of eczema uh, are probably using not quite enough. Uh, this is something that we hear from the dermatologist time and time again whenever we refer to them uh, as GPs, uh, is that people just need to be using more emollient as much as possible. So remember what it is for. It's there to provide an oil barrier of the skin. If you're using a relatively small amount and smearing it all over the skin, spreading it as far as it will go, that oil barrier is not really going to be doing enough. Imagine you're painting a room. If you put a little dab of paint on the walls and you kind of use the roller to spread it as far as you can possibly go, it's just going to be very patchy uh, and the underlying colour of the wall is going to show through. So you want to use enough paint to actually mask what's underneath. And it's exactly the same with the emollient. You want to use enough so that it's actually forming a barrier. Um, and the other mistake that people make is that they probably just don't apply it often enough. So even with the really thick stuff down the ointment, that will probably wear off after about four to six hours. If you're using something like a cream, I would say probably two to four hours. And the lotion, like I said, after about half an hour, it's almost like you haven't used anything at all. So do apply it plenty, otherwise you're just not providing that oil barrier of the skin. So I hope that's been useful. Uh, emollients can probably be used for people with a tendency towards dry skin and the mildest forms of eczema. Um, but I'm also going to be doing a video talking about steroid therapy. So if you have eczema that's slightly more difficult to control than just using emollients alone, 
uh, I'm going to be talking about how to apply steroid creams um, for slightly more difficult to control eczema. And then at some point in the future, I might also do a third video talking about what if that doesn't even work either, uh, what to do next and when to get referred to a dermatologist. All right. Well, I hope that's been useful for you. Um, have a very nice day.